Welcome back. So again, I'm going to go through a comparison of worldly attitudes versus godly attitudes, and this is the, um, the uh, number 7 to uh, 12. A worldly attitude would be having a heart that treasures money and material things, while a godly attitude would be having a heart which treasures things of eternal value. In Colossians 3, 1 and 2, Paul said, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. In other words, set your mind, set your heart on things that count for eternity. Your relationship with God, um, ministry work you're involved in, giving to God's work, relationship with your spouse, your kids, things that are going to count for eternity. Uh, don't set your heart and your minds on, on things um, below, things such as uh, material things, which are very temporary. And that's what Jesus talked about. If you look at Matthew six nineteen to 21 there, he said, Do not build up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, have an eternal perspective instead of a temporal perspective. And that can really change the way you think about money and material things. And your, it'll really change your attitudes towards money and material things. Uh, number eight. The worldly attitude is being greedy, while well, the corresponding godly attitude is giving generously. Luke 6.38, Jesus said, Given it will be given to you, a good measure pressed down, sh shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. In other words, give generously. And if you have a look at uh, Luke 12.15, that was the guy, the, the rich fool who, who uh, hoarded and was very selfish. What did Christ say? To him, he said, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Number nine, the worldly attitude is to be, uh, is being covetous, uh, that is, coveting what others w have. Well, the corresponding godly attitude is to be content. Uh, and of course, that, that tremendously important um, verse that we have for the memorizing, where Paul said, For I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I'm in. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So Paul focused on Christ, and he depended on his relationship with Christ to enable him to be content. And covetousness, of course, Scripture is clear. That's one of the commandments in Exodus 20:17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. If you look through there, his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Covetousness, which often leads people to buying things they really don't need with money they don't have, um, is a worldly attitude. It's not a godly attitude. So the next one is um, number 10. The worldly attitude is worrying excessively about money problems. Well, the godly attitude is trusting God to meet your needs. In Philippians 4.19, God promised to meet our needs. He said, Paul said, I, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Worrying excessively, what did uh, Jesus tell us in Matthew 6, 31 to 33? He said, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In other words, God has promised as we put him first, as we manage money and material things according to his principles and his specific will, uh, he will meet our needs. But by the way, there's no indication in Scripture that God's going to meet your wants and desires. And so often I find when I sit down with a couple or an individual and they've spent more than they've made and they've accumulated debt, often they've purchased a lot of things on credit or even a lot of things, say they, they just bought a lot of things that they really didn't need. There were wants and desires. There were not needs. So you need to really make sure before you buy something and ask the question, is this a need or is it really a want and desire? Oh, number 11, the worldly attitude would be loving money and material things. Well, the godly attitude, of course, is loving God. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And of course, our priority here is to love God. And uh, what did uh, Paul warn in Hebrews 13, 5? He said, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. So we need to make sure that we, we don't have an issue with the love of uh, money and material things. We need to keep our lives free of that. And the final one, number 12, uh, the worldly attitude is being ungrateful and complaining about one's level of income. Isn't that something um, that we all do at some point? Well, the godly attitude is being thankful for God's provision. 
Psalms 107, 8, 9 says, Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for men, for He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. We should be thankful for what we have and not complaining for what we don't have. And, um, of course, Ecclesiastes 5, 11, one of the memory verses, warns that if we have an issue with the love of money, it'll never be enough. It will never satisfy. So that's the end of uh, the teaching portion of session uh, 10, Developing Godly Attitudes. Uh, the video will end in a, in, a, in a few seconds. I would encourage you to go on to the case study and uh, work through that. And may God bless you as you learn uh, His way of managing money, and in particular in this session, as you develop godly attitudes towards money and material things. To learn more, check out copelandfinancialministries.org.